GLP 1s have captured the spotlight, with The Economist recently calling them among the most important breakthrough drugs ever, a testament to their world changing, transformative potential. GLP 1s made the jump from a type 2 diabetes treatment to the top weight loss method, with some people seeing over a 15% reduction in body weight. Now millions of people are using them to lose weight. They've been called everything from a miracle cure to a dangerous shortcut, but with so much hype, it's easy for misinformation to get through. So, what's the real story? To cut through the noise and get to the facts, I sat down with Jarvier Mohammed. Jarvier is a biomedical scientist with a PhD from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I dug through the internet and I pulled videos and Reddit threads about GLP-1s, and together with Jarvier, I reviewed them and he explained what's real and what's misinformation. Hi. So let's get started with the first myth we've got which is a Reddit thread. Took a little bit of a break between shots because the side effects, mostly insomnia, were pretty bad following my last injection two weeks ago. Very quickly, my appetite came back and then some. I binged like crazy the last couple days. It makes me wonder if all the weight that people on semaglutide initially lose basically ends up coming back once they stop taking it. How true is that? Do people gain the weight back? There is a little bit of truth to this, and we see this a lot on the internet as a question coming up among users. Let me start by talking about how GLP-1s work. One of the main ways they work is that they act as a break on your hunger mechanisms. When you stop taking the medication, the break is essentially lifted, and you start feeling hungry again, and your appetite comes back, so you're eating more. The regulated GLP-1s, or the approved GLP-1s, are approved as an adjunct to diet and lifestyle modifications. So increased exercise, a healthier diet. When you stop taking a GLP-1, you have those other mechanisms in place to kind of supplement your lifestyle. So basically, if you don't eat right, if you don't exercise, even on a GLP-1, it's not gonna help you as much. Yeah, there was a clinical trial about 68 weeks that showed that after discontinuing the medication, whether or not you continued with your lifestyle changes or not, there were some weight regains. One study showed that there was about a two thirds weight regain based on what they lost. Is this for everybody or can results vary? Weight loss is different for different people and people respond differently in clinical trials as well. Some studies show that there are uh, certain percentages of people who lose 5% of their weight, 10% of the weight, I believe it's up to 15%. And in terms of weight regain, it's sort of the same thing. Do people need to take these drugs forever? Is this just a maintenance dose or can I take it and then I'm cured, you know? These drugs are approved as a chronic treatment or a lifetime maintenance treatment, so it's likely that these will have to be taken as a lifelong therapy. And then what happens if when you stop? Do you stop and taper it off? Do you stop immediately? So there is no official recommendation on stopping the GLP-1s, whether you're stopping abruptly or tapering off, but there have been studies that showed that there is a benefit to tapering off in terms of maintaining that weight gain and supplementing with your lifestyle changes. But it's always important to consult with your doctor and figure out the best path for your treatment journey. I see lots of people on here counting calories. They plan their meals to be super clean. Has anyone on here had success with just eating what you want and the medication helps you, you know, intuitively know when to stop? I totally relate to this person. I never count my calories as well. The myth here is that, you know, you can eat anything you want while you're on a GLP-1 and you'll lose weight. There is some truth to it, but we should tweak it a little bit. You can eat anything you want while you're on a GLP-1, but you probably shouldn't. A healthy balanced diet is important for all of us, but especially for someone who's on a GLP-1. GLP-1s make you less hungry, so you're eating less food. And so you need to supplement the fact that you're eating less by putting more nutrition into your body. So it's important that we want to hit a few nutrition goals. We want to make sure that we're staying hydrated. We want to make sure that we're taking in enough protein so that we're supplementing muscle mass that we may be losing while we're on GLP-1s. But you know, there's a huge mental strain on measuring your food, weighing out your food, all these things. I personally don't do it. So it's just important that you're kind of, you know, monitoring your own body, chatting with your doctor all the time, and making sure that you hit certain nutritional goals. I don't get the big deal with these GLP-1 medications. They're just an appetite suppressant. Wrong. They don't just suppress appetite. They do a lot more than that. 
When we think about appetite suppressants, we usually think about the older generation of anti-obesity medications like Phentermine. Phentermine is a stimulant and it activates our sympathetic nervous system and kind of speeds everything up. And generally what we see with medications like Phentermine is people are just not hungry all day and then the medication wears off and their hunger returns to normal. The way that GLP-1 medications work is different. What she seems to be saying is that GLP-1 medications are not just appetite suppressants, but a lot of people talk about them that way. I'm really glad that this person in this video is talking about Phentermine. Phentermine is kind of one of the classic appetite suppressants that everyone's generally familiar with. They are not similar in any way to GLP-1s. GLP-1s are receptor agonists, and the way that works is that it, they activate your GLP-1 receptors, which are actually located across multiple organs in your body. So they work in different places, including your brain, your stomach, your gut. Some preclinical studies have shown that they mitigate neuroinflammation. There are other studies that show that they may have an effect on fertility. Yeah, like a lot of receptors in our body, they are multitaskers. Yes. They do more than one thing. Yes. You mentioned neuroinflammation, like inflammation in your brain. What does neuroinflammation mean? Like, what does that do? So this is implicated in a lot of uh, cognitive disorders, like Alzheimer's, for example. So there are a lot of studies actually coming out right now examining the role of GLP-1s in mitigating Alzheimer's. That's amazing. So there's a lot more to learn, is what you're saying. We're still kind of exploring what these drugs can do. What does an appetite suppressant do versus all of the stuff we've been talking about with GLP-1? So the appetite suppressants legitimately just make you not hungry. And GLP-1s sort of work in the same way, but the idea is that they go well beyond this. GLP-1s mimic a natural peptide that we have in our bodies. They mimic your normal biological mechanism. So, you know, it tells your brain, hey, I'm not hungry. It slows your gut mobility, so the food's moving moving from your stomach a little bit slower, you feel less hungry. Researchers are also looking into other areas where GLP-1s can be effective. They're already approved for certain cardiovascular health disorders. They are being studied for sleep apnea and other indications. Wow, and so somebody starts taking GLP-1, they're thinking about what they're putting into their body a little more. They're thinking more about their exercise. They're thinking more about their health and their brain is rewiring itself to kind of have a different lifestyle over time. Never have I ever gotten a question more than you guys wanting me to talk about microdoses of GLP-1s. I think soon we are going to realize we are grossly over medicating people on these medications and it is what is leading to massive side effects and leaving people debilitated. People do not need as much medication as we're giving them and we can't adjust the dose. You know what doesn't happen when you microdose people? All those crazy side effects. What dose do they use for the FDA approved branded GLP-1s versus the compound? Are they the same? So the different uh, FDA approved drugs are available in different doses and there's typically a step up dosing. So you start at a very low dose and make your way up to whatever your maintenance dose is. I would have to disagree with her in terms of the micro dosing of your GLP-1s. The approved dose is, is the one that was studied, went through clinical trials, is federally regulated. You definitely want to stick to what has the most robust research supporting it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you are putting a hormone into your body, so your metabolism is going to change and that causes different effects in your body. And so side effects are likely to occur as well. So the idea that you're taking a, a drug at a dose that's higher than you actually need is a little bit hand wavy. We talked a lot about myths today. How do we distinguish the myths from reality? GLP-1 is a hormone that's naturally in our bodies and, you know, we're taking a drug that mimics that. That has a profound effect on our bodies systemically and it's different for different people. Important thing to do is, as you said, dispel myth from reality. And so ways that you can do that is, you know, you seek out reputable sources, you go to the drug websites, you read the data on the clinical trials, avoid anything that's old information. GLP-1s are super new and so there's new information coming out about them all the time. Finally, always, you know, consult with your healthcare provider, they would have the best and most individualized advice for you. Well, that's a lot of really good information. And it's great to hear it from somebody who spends their time, you know, studying stuff like this and understanding how it affects us. So thank you for coming and taking the time to answer these questions for yeah, us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. We covered a lot in this episode, but to sum it all up, GLP-1s are a long-term commitment. They will not only help you achieve your weight loss goals, but maintain them. A part of using GLP-1s is adjusting your lifestyle. And while maintaining a healthy, balanced diet might be difficult for some, 
It will ensure you're getting enough nutrients and help manage those side effects, and it can help you lose weight. The effects of GLP-1s are felt throughout your body. Scientists have already found they improve heart health and there's science emerging on other possible benefits too. And finally, by increasing your dose slowly over time, any GI side effects you may experience should be mild and temporary. But if they are severe or persistent, a lower dose might be the right choice for you. It's important to always talk to your doctor about side effects that you might be experiencing. Thanks for watching. Do you have a question about GLP-1s you want to get an expert opinion on? Leave a comment with your thoughts down below and maybe we'll answer that in a future episode. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our latest content. We have more episodes on the changing world of health right around the corner. Sleep apnea, addiction, even memory loss, and cancer. We're talking about potentially tackling issues that we've been grappling with for hundreds of years. Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, Zepbound, these drugs are showing surprising potential.